Welcome back to the APP Pickleball Superstore.com Philadelphia Open Men's Singles Gold Medal Match is coming up next. And here's a look at how we got here. As you can see, Yates Johnson coming through the winner's bracket final, but Jack Foster battling his way through the consolation bracket to earn his right to play on championship Sunday. The State Farm men's singles gold medal match is going to be a good one. When you guys look at this match between these two players, what does Jack need to do in order to take down Yates? Well, Jack has really been tested. That bottom half of the bracket the other day was insane. Jack had to win some really challenging matches in that game, in those games of 15. So he is battle tested and ready for this match. But the difference maker for me, Chad, for Jack, it's upstairs. It's everything 100%. between the ears. And I talked to him before the match and was talking. And he was just kind of going over. He's like, I just need to keep in my head, not get too high, not get too low, but just play my game. And that's going to be the X factor for me for Jack Foster is keeping it between the ears. The the other part of it, too, is, if, is how much Yates can find Foster's backhand. Foster has a big serve, a big forehand, but not as strong on the backhand side, so he runs around that backhand a lot. If he gets caught doing that too much, Yates is going to open the court, the court up on him. For Johnson, it's going to come down to how much shape and how much control he has today. He always has the power, but... He has a tendency that those balls spray a little bit or they flatten out on him, and that's where he gets in trouble. Yates Johnson going to start us off with the serve here. And that one flattened out. No. <laughs> Quick side out. Chad, you were talking about uh, Yates' key trying to go to Jack Foster's backhand. I was just talking with Hunter Johnson yep. to Yates, and he said that's exactly what he told him. He said his piece of advice for his brother today was to go for your shots and aim for Foster's backhand. Yeah, and Foster runs around the backhand right there, right there and flicks one down the line. Excellent passing shot. The difficulty is, is if you go to the backhand too many times, Foster is just going to hang out and run around it every single time. So that's the difference maker right there. If he runs around it too much and goes cross court, that drop right there is going to be wide open for Johnson. Big serve there from Yates. Johnson kicks up. Foster trying to get up to that kitchen line early. Great return off the hard serve from Yates Johnson. And again, that's going to be a key. And Chad, we talk about it all the time is that serving in singles is so important. You really want to get into it. It's going to be Foster, the 22 year old, with the serve. And speaking and of strong serves, Foster has yeah. one of the biggest serves on the tour. He definitely rips that. Foster, a two-sport athlete in high school, played football and baseball, but he said that was really mostly because they didn't have a pickleball team. He has really <laughs> enjoyed playing pickleball and has committed it, committed to it pretty heavily here. That's a great ball there from Yates Johnson going cross court. And again, he had Foster pinching just enough to his left backhand side. Yeah, that's too good there. And another big serve there from Johnson. You see that just a couple of inches inside the baseline. Foster trying to come up early on it again, but doesn't get the depth on the return. It just sits up in the middle of the court and gives Johnson plenty of time to determine which way Foster's going to lean. Gives Johnson his first lead early on in this game, number one, and he builds on it here. And difference here from women's singles, which we just watched, to men's singles, the men do not hesitate coming to the kitchen line. They will come up pretty much on every return. Foster returns this, and he comes up. Nice. Him. Yeah, nice control of the kitchen line there from Foster. And again, getting there and getting control and plays a little cat and mouse with Yates Johnson. Yeah, Johnson tried to disguise that forehand flick, but Foster did not bite on it at all. So it'll be a side out, ball back on the side of Foster. Like I mentioned, no pickleball team in high school, so he did play a little bit of tennis as well. 
and he said that uh, when he played tennis, he ended up being the number two seed for a lot of the tournaments, and parents would give him quite the dirty look because he didn't grow up playing tennis, so he's taking down, <laughs> he's taking down these players who've committed their lives to tennis, and uh, said he got a few dirty looks from the parents of the kids that he would beat. Well, Jack is just a pure athlete, right? You watch him on the court. There's not a ball that he does not think he can't get to. Johnson with the serve up 4-3. So ball goes back to the side of Jack Foster. Yates played collegiate tennis at SMU before he and his brother made the decision to commit full time to pickleball. They are two of the top pros here on the APP Tour. Hunter with a few more men's singles gold medals than Yates, though. So Yates would love nothing more than to close that gap today. But Foster having a very strong start. Yeah, and you see Yates look down at the ground. That ball never came up. And again, it's it's not typically the ground that's causing it. It's the ball, right? The ball will tend to sometimes it'll hit one of the holes. It won't come up. It'll hit a dead spot within the ball and so again causing some troubles right here for Yates Johnson as Jack Foster getting some coaching tips from one of the OGs of pickleball Frank Anthony Davis on the sideline here Frank and Jack practice a lot together play a lot together they will be partnering up for some doubles events coming up in the second half of the season here on the APP tour Gates calling the timeout on the court to get a minute. Reset here. Finds himself trailing by a point here in game one. Game one in our best two out of three, 211. Jack's got a solid support staff over here with Salome Davidze, Frank Anthony Davis, Amanda Hendry, his girlfriend in the corner. That's some skilled singles players over there backing <laughs> you up. Oh, wow. That's oh. a big inside-out forehand there from Foster. But what's he do with it, Chad? Well, it, he doesn't. He doesn't overhit it though. He gives it some. He gives it some shape, and that's the that's the key is getting it to drop below the net. And another one. Again, same thing, right? Instead of trying to really rip through that at about 100%, he's hitting that at about 65 70%, and it's causing some shape and dip on the ball. A little unlucky there catching the net court. He had Johnson leaving, leaning the other way, thought... Johnson thought that Foster was going to go down the line with it. Again, goes inside out. Four, seven. Four, yeah, Johnson, Johnson giving some shape of his own right there. Well, that's caused by the big serve from Johnson and Foster with a weaker return into the transition area, allowing Johnson to step into that. Well, it's the battle of the big serves right now. And that's what we've come to see in men's singles. Johnson with the serve, trying to tie things up here in game number one. <laughs> so, Lonjaj calling that one out, but Yates letting them know that Foster touched that one. That's why it went wide. So a good timeout by Johnson coming back, getting the sub, putting another couple of points on the board. So a tie game here in game one, a little back and forth battle. Let's take another look at that last point that Yates Johnson scored to tie things up. Bit of a feeling out process always happens at the beginning of game one here in a, especially in a gold medal match. And so we've seen some big serves from both of these players. What do you think for, let's start with Yates, since it's gonna be his ball. 
much. What does he need to dial in here to lock up this game number one? Again, continue to go with the big serve. It's causing Foster some issues. So continue to go with the big serve. And then again, with both of these guys, when they get to the kitchen line, the last thing you need to do is try and drive through them. They both cover the court so well. So it's create some shape when you got Foster up at the net. Create some shape, create some good angle. Make Foster hit up on the ball. I think it's the same kind of game plan, though, for Foster, for, for too. For Foster it's, as well. He's just got to get a deeper return yep. here to get that, get that serve back. Not a return into the net. Though. Wow. But again, he's he's pushing so hard to get up there early to put the put the pressure on. <laughs> Yates Johnson picks up a leaf off the off the court and gives it to one of the members in the crowd. It's been something we've seen a little bit, especially today. It is middle of august end of august we're in the end of august how did that happen time has flown by end of august and some of the leaves are starting to fall from the trees here in pennsylvania that's nasty there from from yates johnson excuse me cross court two hand winner he got into this one too now it's yates johnson with a chance to win game number one yeah, that one flattened out on him. He tried to rush it a little bit, didn't extend through with the left as much, so he didn't get the shape. Good hold there from Foster on the first game point from Yates Johnson. Oh, just missing wide there for Foster. Overhit that one a little bit, went for a little bit more power and short court there. So ball back on the side Only of just sorry. That's okay. I'm just gonna say ball back on the side of Yates Johnson. He's got a chance to win game one right here. Oh, but Jack Foster with the change of pace and filthy. That's too good. And he reads that Yates Johnson is on his heels right there and just drops that into the kitchen. So change of pace is something that you guys always talk about, taking the pace off of the ball because it is placement over power. Foster listening to that advice here. Now with a chance to dig into this lead and a big serve. That ball just catches the sideline. Slides a little bit. Not much of an opportunity for Johnson to pick that one up. So because Foster's gone inside out forehand probably six out of seven times, Yates Johnson is leaning to that side, and Jack Foster just rips a winner flat down the line. Great job by Jack Foster. You talked about the fight that Foster showed just to punch his ticket back here to Championship Sunday, having to <laughs> battle all the way back through the backdrop. The fight continues today. I, I won't I won't repeat the words that he said to me early on on Thursday, but so school started for him on Wednesday. He had to go and take an exam. It's his senior year. He got in here at 3 a.m. on Thursday, and then the singles bracket started at 8 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> and then he proceeds to lose his first match. And to come all the way back here and earn the right to play on Championship Sunday, he had to win seven matches on the bottom half. Seven games to 15 in the same day, dealing with rain delays, going from outside to inside, inside to outside. Every element is against Foster, and he still moved on to today. And now he's having to take on Yates Johnson, two men's singles gold medals under his belt already this APP Tour season. But here Foster is with a chance to tie things up in game one. Oh, he baby did. Yeah, he baby did. Slowed everything down right there. As he's hitting it, I'm like, no. <laughs> Ball back on the side of Yates. Another game point opportunity. And Yates getting a little love off the tape there. Skips off the top of the net, lands inside the baseline. So game one goes to Yates Johnson in our men's singles gold medal match here in Philadelphia. We will have game two when we come back.
retirement. It's not all one big vacation. It's great to find purpose by trying a new activity. Keep an active social life, but don't forget to make new friends too. As always, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Ah, isn't it wonderful to be retired? another look at the game point by Yates Johnson to take game one skipping off the top of the net and landing in nothing Jack Foster can do about that battles back in that first game now gonna start us off here in game two with the serve good movement there from Foster on the court Yates read the inside out forehand and pushed Foster again out wide but a big forehand down the line to an outreach, out extended Johnson. Good spot right there from Yates Johnson, getting Jack Foster fully extended on his forehand side. So ball goes over to Yates Johnson, who's going to serve for the first time here in game number two. Remember, because Yates came through the winner's bracket, all he has to do is win this game, but that will be a side out. Foster, on the other hand, though, needs to win not just this game to 11, but then another game to 11, and then would have to go on and win the championship tiebreaker game to 15. So a massive task ahead for Foster, but the 22-year-old proven. I can oh, he had the around the post. There. He was there. What coverage from Jack Foster. Horse. Sideline to sideline, and Foster just can't put the shape on it. He mishit it. Uh, Johnson tries to be soft and drops that one back over. One zero. <laughs> Foster up one zero. Oh, great control of the kitchen line from Yeats Johnson, but Foster just forcing him to hit one more ball, and then Johnson tries to do just a little too much with that forehand. 2-0. 2 nothing lead for Foster's serve. Yeah, so good right there. That ball, he could overhit that so easily because you have so much time, the ball sitting up, but Foster takes a little off it corner pocket winner such a tough spot to defend in any division of pickleball that serve though sailing long yeah but that's part of the risk reward right there with the big serve you get that shorter return but you may miss a couple deep really quick side out there foster able to hold Johnson scoreless well it's it's the pressure game. it's the pressure that Foster's putting on on Johnson there he's he's trying to make him hit the the more difficult shots going back across the body Wow, good control again from Foster. There was a couple of balls that I thought that Foster was going to rip, and he didn't. He controlled that point, 
and it's a 4-0 lead for Foster. So Yates Johnson calling the timeout here in game number two, trailing 4-0. And this has been a very hard fought four points for Jack Foster. It's not like he's gone on a run of one, two, three, four. We've had, he scored the one, then there were several side outs, then two, then three, then two more side outs. So it's been really hard fought in these points. Foster though, what is he doing to get the edge and that final ball in a spot that Yates can't get to it? He's earning it right now. He's really working his tail off, earning every bit. And what he's doing, he's putting pressure on Yates Johnson, hit one more ball, one, one more ball, and then every time that's happening right now, Yates is just over hitting it. And so again, it's Jack Foster doing everything he can, stay in points, force one more ball, and get Yates into some pressure situations that he's not comfortable in at the moment. So Yates Johnson, who has two men's singles gold medals on the APP Tour so far this season, trailing by four points here in game number two. But because he came through that winner's bracket, all he needs to do is win this second game in order to lock in his gold medal. Foster with much more work ahead of him, but certainly proving he's up for it. Strong Ball. angle taken there. Ball's real close that to being out. Mm -hmm. Just inside the baseline. Good penetration there by Johnson. So it'll be Yates Johnson with the serve, trying to put a point up on the board here in game number two. And he does it. His first point comes off of a forehand into the net from Jack Foster. Well, Foster is forcing Johnson into gameplay or, or, or kind of a game plan that he's not comfortable with right now. He's trying to drop balls in now. Yeah. Yates wants to really kind of pull the trigger, rip ball sideline to sideline, and Foster's forcing him into a cat and mouse right now. Four, one. Uh, too good of a touch there by Johnson. The, uh, he tried to do that earlier, the adjustment he made here. Paddles further out in front, sets that angle already, attaches it. Not much that Foster could do that. Does a great job just to almost get to that ball with the angle and the pace that Yates put on it. Uh, Johnson can't miss that one. He set it up so well with a big serve. Created that shorter return. Just stands up tall and almost runs through that ball. So despite Yates Johnson having some really well-placed shots, the rhythm does seem to be on the side of Jack Foster. He continues to just work out his serves to the point where he can get the points when the ball's on his side. He throws a change up right there, and Yates Johnson's eyes light up as he tries to put that ball away, but goes just a little too big. 5-1 Five, one. Five, one for Foster's serve. Well, the, the issue that Johnson's having right now is that he's trying to move into position. He's trying to recover before he's made contact. We saw it on the backhand side where he's trying to recover back middle. That one on the forehand side needs to just set up a little earlier. And it's raining leaves right now. The wind just not even really picking up. Just a slight breeze moving through and... You can see on your screen the leaves beginning to fall here on championship court. So a timeout called by our referees to pick up the leaves and clear the court as Jack Foster just has been persistent in his pursuit of these seven points as he's built himself up a six-point lead here in game number two. Yates Johnson in the timeout getting some feedback from his twin brother Hunter. Hunter, like we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, having to pull out of this tournament because he had an injured his back in his first men's single match on Thursday. Tells me it's still pretty stiff this morning. He's going to do everything he can to get some work done on it. Be back in time for Chicago, our next stop here on the APP Tour next week. But right now it is all about feeding in to his brother, Yates Johnson. If you're Hunter, what is the advice that you're giving Yates right now? 
Well, it's more so right now is just to, to settle down and settle into these points. Don't try to rush through it. Don't try to force the issue. Foss is doing an excellent job controlling the kitchen line. But like I was saying, Yates is getting to that ball, and then he's trying to recover and move back into the next position before he's actually ex executed the shot. So he's rushing them. It's, they're flattening out on him. He's catching, he's catching the net. He just needs to go back to basics and trust that he can move well enough to catch up to these balls. It's going to be Jack Foster with the serve, though, the 22-year-old trying to take game two here. Send us to a game three, and if he wants to win the gold, would eventually need to win a championship tiebreaker. One point at a time, though, if you're Foster. I'm sorry. Wow, what a point. Just when it looked like Foster was down and out, he tracks every one of these down and then just finds the open area. Foster, again, just showing that athleticism. Three-sport athlete in high school. Ooh, that was close. It was very close. Our broadcast booth sitting right on that baseline. So we got a pretty good look at that ball. The line judge calling it out. Yeah, it's a much better return there from Johnson. Was a little bit easier serve after it caught the net court and just popped up for him. So now it is Yates Johnson trailing by eight points, trying to work his way back into this game. Starts with a single point. Yates going right at the body of Foster there. There was no hiding what his plan was there. Uh, Johnson again falling off there. You see him set, and then as he's coming through that motion, body falls off, ends up pulling him, pulling that paddle across the body and that's why that one went into the net didn't quite get the extension that is needed to get the shape wow that's a big serve from jack foster a big serve and he tells himself one more here in game two jack foster with a chance to win it right here and that is how he does it. A big serve from Jack Foster wins him game number two. And so off to game number three we go here in the men's singles gold medal match at the APPPickleballSuperstore.com Philadelphia Open. We'll be right back with game three. <laughs> Need to sell tickets for an event? From Sports Illustrated's official ticketing platform, introducing Box Office. Manage ticketing for sports, festivals, fundraisers, and more, paid or free. And we go beyond the barcode. Introducing Super Ticket. Super Tickets are secured by blockchain technology and transform into exclusive digital content, promotions, and rewards between the event and guests. Cheaper, better, simpler, more secure. Sports Illustrated Tickets. Partner with us for your next event.
APP is presented by AARP, Volpe, AMN Healthcare, and PowerPlate. What a men's singles gold medal match we have here from the APP pickleballsuperstore.com. Philadelphia Open, Jack Foster, the 22-year-old, fighting with everything he's got to take home this men's singles gold medal against Yate Johnson, who has two of them already on the APP Tour this season. Yates taking game one, Jack taking game two, game three underway with Yates Johnson serve. Ooh, wow. <laughs> Yates is waiting for the call, the line judge back here. He calls it in. Yates tried to give him a high five. <laughs> he was having none of it. But that's how that's how Johnson has to play right there. He slowed himself down. He's been more deliberate with the with the passing shot down the line on the backhand and then more deliberate with the backhand cross court there. But I'll also tell you what, Chad, is when Yates, and it's the same thing for Hunter, for both of them, when they are both playing loose and just like that, with some, with some you know, kind of personality, yep. that's when they're playing best. When they're mad, when they're upset, that's when they make mistakes and get tight. Oh, over hits that one. It was a sitter on the backhand side, and Johnson just pushes it wide. It's going to be Jack Foster with an opportunity to tie things up here in game three. Oh, that one shapes back in. <laughs> that died. I, I <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Foster's not playing with a paddle that's known for a lot of, a lot of spin and a lot of shape. Or power. <laughs> <laughs> right, because off, off his paddle on that last ball that stayed in, it looked like it was going way long and then just dropped two feet in. Oh, well, it was just wide. Line judge <laughs> calling that one. You see it. Yeah, it looked like it may have just missed the line. So it's Johnson back in the lead here in game three. For him to win the gold medal, all he has to do is win this third game. If Foster wants to take home the gold, he doesn't just need to win this game three. He then has to win a championship tiebreaker game to 15. Three, two for Johnson's serve. Big serve right there from Yates Johnson. And again, it's that's been the difference maker here throughout games one and two is big serves. All right, Johnson went back to rushing again there. He had that opening, tried to get that backhand off before Foster got out to the kitchen line and just ran through it. That ball's going out and... Yates Johnson knows it right there. But again, it's court awareness, knowing where you're at on the court, letting that ball go. So Jack Foster getting ready to serve, trying to tie things up. That ball going a few inches long on the serve. So instead, it'll be Yates with a chance to extend his lead. Jack Foster forcing Yates to run all over the court in a zigzag pattern. Another look. Yeah, well, Johnson backed up a little bit to try to give himself some more court coverage. Foster recognized it, hit, dropped that shorter ball, and Yates was just a little too far away. Tried to flick it back cross court, but good coverage by Foster. Three, 
Wow, I think Yates Johnson thought that ball was going to go out and then ends up having to play it left-handed. Flips it back up and over, and then Jack Foster goes back behind. Well, one one thing here, and we saw it yesterday, the, the side that Johnson is on right now, he has the wind to his back, so a lot of those balls are getting pushed down that potentially were going to go wide or, or deep. Another big serve proving to be a key here. Both Jack Foster and Yates Johnson found success. So it's Foster taking his first lead here in game three. And a change of pace right there from Foster. He doesn't rip this ball. The ball gets over the net. It's starting to dip down to the backhand of Yates Johnson. And all of a sudden, Foster back in control here in game three. Jack Foster just showing so much resilience here in this men's singles gold medal match of our APP Pickleball Superstore.com Philadelphia Open. Have to imagine when you start in the men's singles bracket like he did, like you said, Chad, on just a few hours of sleep <laughs> and then getting knocked back to the consolation bracket in his very first match. He's like, you know what? I have come this far. I am leaving everything out on the court and certainly we have seen that throughout these first three games the last two in particular jack foster gonna need to dig deep because he has a big hill to climb if he wants to win that men's singles gold medal has to finish this game off with a win and then he'd have to go to a 15 point championship tiebreaker against yates johnson and win that and that is because here on the APP Tour, you must lose twice in order to be eliminated. So Yates making his way through the winner's bracket has yet to lose. If Jack takes his third game, it'll be the first time Yates has lost a best two out of three games to 11. So they got to do it again. 15-point championship tiebreaker would be next. Would be quite exciting. Bring it on. Would be quite exciting. Wow, Foster keeps that ball so low to the net right there. Beautifully done on the forehand side from Jack Foster. Gives himself a three-point lead. Here in game number three. Seven, four. Another perfect inside-in ball but there by Foster. The way he's setting himself up, I mean, today we're seeing much better preparation from Foster. He has a lot of confidence. He's moving around the court well. He's still jumping around between points. He's got a little bit of a pep in his step. So it's good to see from Foster today on the other side. Johnson got up early. He was playing loose. And then once Foster put a little bit of pressure on, now it's back to shoulders are slumped a little bit more, heads down, trying to rush through things. So that's, in, in essence, that's going to show like how much body language and, and uh, you know, the, the, the overall feeling on the court goes to, to how well these athletes are performing. Certainly something, too, if you watch the APP Tour with any frequency. You've seen plenty of Yates Johnson in men's singles as well as men's doubles with his partner and his twin brother, Hunter Johnson. And we've seen Yates show quite a little, quite a bit of emotion on the court. He's somebody who always seems to be talking to himself, reminding him of things or, you know, talking his way through points, whatever it is. But when he gets down, he does seem to lose that little personality that we typically see him play with when he's feeling like he's playing in a good spot. Jack just missing this forehand right here. That would have been a huge. Oh. Yates missing that serve. So no ability to take advantage of Foster's miss earlier instead ball right back to foster and it's yates who misses long it looked early like yates is going to be in control of this third game and foster just flipped the script on him really quick wow there's that inside out drop from jack foster Time out receiver. 
And another timeout called on the court by Yates Johnson, putting his hands up in the air as he sits on his chair. I mean, put this in perspective here, too. This is a 21-6 to kind of run in the start from the start of game two for Jack Foster. I mean, you're only losing six points to one of the best singles players on tour. You've got to be doing something right. Yo, I mean, right now it's it's like I said, Foster has the confidence. This this is probably the the best body language that I've seen out of him. The most composure. He's really feeding off of his his group here on the sideline. You see him after every good shot. He's turning around, fist pump, talking to them. If if you don't think that that means something, it does. You're looking to them to build you up, but then you're also looking to them to keep you going when you're playing well, and he is feeding off that. So Jack Foster with an opportunity to win game three here, force us to a championship tiebreaker game to 15. And he does it. Jack Foster wins games two and games three against Yates Johnson. And so now we move to a championship tiebreaker game to 15. The winner of this is going to win our men's singles gold medal. Medal. Will it be Yates Johnson, who's got two of them already in men's singles on this APP tour, or Jack Foster, the 22-year-old who has shown such resilience, such fight throughout this entire tournament, Will he continue and complete the mission? We're going to take a little bit of a break now, give the players a chance to catch their breath, grab some water. But we'll be right back on ESPN Plus with our championship tiebreaker of our men's singles gold medal match. save time when we buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. Which means more time Wait, for... Check. Kyle, it's Pickleball. Every time. Zero, zero, two. Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. Ah, retirement. It's not all one big vacation. It's great to find purpose by trying a new activity. Keep an active social life. But don't forget to make new friends, too. As always, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Ah, isn't it wonderful to be retired? State Farm. I want that personal price plan. So how's this for personal? I draw mustaches on players' faces when they're asleep. Hmm. Coach Reed, you don't need to get that personal to get the State Farm personal price plan. It helps you create an affordable price just for you. Oh, Coach, it happened again. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Call or click to get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 
Having a tough time getting better? Our three-day Level Up Pickleball camps feature a low student pro ratio and offer personalised training from the best pros in the game. Level Up will take you full circle through the point building process by teaching proper stroke mechanics, positioning and winning game strategies. Each camper also receives a personalised before and after video, an instructional manual, product discounts and more. Discover how good you can be with Level Up Pickleball camps. Visit us today at leveluppickleballcamps.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. from tonight, Grant Gill will become a legend when he totally kills it at his improv class's graduation performance. Knees will be slapped. Suds will be sprayed. People won't know what hurts more, their cheeks or their sides. That's why he's already keeping himself in shape and razor sharp today with health tips and wellness tools from AARP to help make sure his health lives as long as he does. Because the younger you are, the more you need AARP. We save time when we buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. Which means more time Wait, for... Wait, take a check. Kyle, it's Pickleball. Every time. Zero, zero, two. Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. The APP is presented by AARP. Franklin. Leo Rive. And Pickleball United. Welcome back to Philadelphia. You're taking a look at Championship Court. We got a little break in the action here of our men's singles gold medal match as we wait for the players to get ready for this championship tiebreaker game. We want to introduce you to an incredible man. Jürgen Schmeider is a former professional soccer player from Germany who has had nothing short of a roller coaster of a life filled with ups and downs. Here's Jürgen's emotional pickleball story presented by AARP. I grew up playing sports all my life. It's rough, but it's also a fun life. I grew up in a small town in Bavaria, Germany. Everybody plays soccer in Germany, and I happen to be a decent soccer player, so I made it to the professional level, and that's how I came to the U.S. When I met him, he was a professional soccer player, so he was always active, running around. And then when we moved here, he found pickleball. A couple months had gone by, and we were playing a lot pretty much every week. During COVID, I would work out still every day, but I led a very unhealthy lifestyle. I started getting depressed. I ate like a pig. I got more into the sweets, the bad eating habits. I guess it caught up to him. I went into an unhealthy spiral. When I arrived at the doctor's office, the doctor said, dude, your A1C level is 13.8, and you should have died. The severity of a 
hemoglobin A1c cannot be understated. Uh, hemoglobin A1c of 5.7 or below is considered normal. I fell into a diabetic coma. After I found out that I was diabetic, I knew I also had to change my workout regimen a little bit. I only kept my level down because I would play pickleball about four times a week. The doctor specifically said, pickleball saved your life. I started playing local amateur tournaments and then there was this chatter about this golden ticket. My goal became win that golden ticket. The beautiful thing about the APP is it's a great community. It's about connecting, about helping each other. People are so welcoming. And I think that's what Pickleball and the APP is all about. What an unbelievable story. And best of luck to you, Jurgen, on your quest to be the best at age 50. Here's a look at our APP Pickleball Superstore.com Philadelphia Open by the numbers. 550 total participants, 230 pros. It took them 46 flights to get here, and 13 of 18 APP gold medalists entered in this event. Yates Johnson has two men's singles gold medals to his name so far on this APP Tour 2023 season. Can he add another? He's going to have to stop a very a strong fighter in Jack Foster who has all the momentum. We're heading to our championship tiebreaker game to 15 when we come back. State Farm, I really need to know. Uh, go spicy or go home, right? What? No. What if I'm not sure I have the right coverage for my car? Oh, your agent can help me make sure it's just what you need. What if I accidentally hit a food truck and it gets covered in empanadas? You can file a claim on the app. At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. <sighs> Thanks. Oh. Mm. That is spicy. That's for you. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. The Pro XR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. Face. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. 
They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. APP is presented by Skechers, Powerplate, Yola, and Level Up. We save time when we buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. Which means more time Wait, for... Check. Kyle, it's Pickleball. Every time. Zero, zero, two. Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. Welcome back here to Championship Court. We have a championship tie break here on Championship Court at the APP pickleballsuperstore.com Philadelphia Open Jack Foster wins the two out of three against E.H. Johnson 9-11 11-2 11-4 to force this game to 15 and Chad we talked about it a couple keys big serves and good returns what are you looking for here in this game to 15 from both of these guys. Well, for, for Johnson, what I want to see from him is to calm himself down and commit to his strokes. Don't rush through. We, when he got up early in game one and in game three, he was playing loose. He was having fun with it. He wasn't trying to rush through things. But then when he felt the pressure, he tried starting to do too much. And Foster is the one that is stayed cool, calm, and collected here. For Foster on the other side of it, don't change anything right now. Go out, big serve, look for that inside out forehand. When he hits a couple of those, then flip it down the line. But he's hitting balls with good shape. He's not overhitting, not trying to do too much. He's just playing consistent, and that is what's got him in front so far. So it is our championship tiebreaker game to 15 here in our men's singles gold medal match. It has been such a fun match so far. Jack Foster against Yates Johnson. Jack playing in his very first championship Sunday here in the men's singles of the 2023 APP Tour. Yates Johnson has two men's singles gold medals to his name already this 2023 APP season. Can he add a third we will find out momentarily it's going to be jack foster getting it started with the serve that ball just deep foster rushing that one just a little bit 
He got what he wanted because it was, and he we hear him saying, great look, and it was because it was a short return from Yates. Yeah, big backswing there from Foster moving into it, ends up jamming himself up. Just missing the cross-court drop is Yates Johnson. So a quick side out, back to the side of Jack Foster. Back to back, Yates just clipping the top of that net. Can't get it to roll over. Key is the height right there for Foster with that drive. That's clearing the net by an inch. That ball just wide. Johnson missing that way. I mean, yeah, if there's if there's a couple of things for Johnson to clean up, one is his volleys. He's catching them too, big, too deep, but like you said, it's the height of the ball from Foster. He's also getting him overextended. Two is he's making too many unforced errors. Speaking of an unforced error, that serve, a little bit long from Foster. So he gives the ball back to Yates, but not before taking the lead. So you got Yates Johnson trying to shape that ball down the line, just doesn't get enough on it. There it is, Chad, right there. Again, another unforced error, and he needs to clean those up, and that's what got him in trouble in games two and three. Taking a second is Yates to towel off. Mentioned the heat and the humidity here in Philadelphia. Today, though, feels like by far the best day so far. We are starting pretty early and Yates Johnson well placed yeah good hands there by Johnson but just a few too many balls from Foster going into the body of Johnson needed to try to push one a little bit wider Ooh. Yates looking at the net going um whose side are you on because that's three so far in this championship tiebreaker came to 15 that he hits just into the top they don't roll over wow nice inside out forehand there from jack foster and he didn't have that much room because that was a good return from yates going right down the middle of the court foster created his own angle there So it's Jack Foster working on a 4-1 lead here. Oh. <laughs> but he slows himself down there. Very easily could he try to hit his way out of power, out of position. But he takes a nice, smooth, consistent swing, flips it a little bit with the inside in, gets the shape. Nothing Johnson can do about that ball. Perfect spot from Jack Foster. And this is looking all too similar if you're Yates Johnson to this second game here in the men's singles gold medal match. Foster building up a 5-1 lead, but then Yates goes cross court, forehand winner. Much better control at the kitchen line there from Yates Johnson. There was no rush. That second game is what gave Foster his momentum here and that return that serve sailing long for Yates Johnson that second game Jack Foster ended up winning 11 to oh, two it's gonna get cold for a technical right now the officials conferring the referees excuse me conferring at the kitchen line so walk us through what's well, happening here right okay. after right after Johnson missed that serve. Oh, maybe not. Right after Johnson missed that serve, the baseline referee here calling in head referee Andy Jones. Great get by Yates. And typically when a when a line job judge or a supporting referee calls in the head referee, it's never something good. <laughs> uh, usually about language or attitude or something. Ooh, good hands by Foster to win that firefight up at the kitchen line. Again, he gets E.H. Johnson fully extended on a block here. So we've been sitting at this 5-1 score. Jack Foster in the lead for a few service sides now. And Foster trying to ex 
extend it and does it with a big serve. You hit it right on the head, AJ. It's a huge serve here from Jack Foster. And we hit on it, Chad, when we first came back to this game to 15 about the big serves coming into play. Uh, Foster needs to not speed that ball up. He got there in plenty of time with that backhand. He's got to just drop that ball back up and over. Well, he got into the cat, the cat and mouse, but then he was just trying to hit his way through Johnson there. Much better job from Johnson staying composed up at the kitchen line. Jack Foster almost getting to that ball, but Yates... Taking a good angle, taking some pace off of it. Another look at it. When Foster goes for this Ernie right here, it's basically all or nothing. He's either going to win it or lose it on that point. So that ends a 5-0 run by Jack Foster. Yates putting his first point on the board since the score was 1-0. Interesting grunt there from Jack Foster. <laughs> Again, full effort and full extension on that forehand on a good drop from E.H. Johnson. So he does get one back, but side out. So Jack Foster still with a healthy four-point lead here in our championship tiebreaker game to 15. Men's singles gold medal match. Whoever wins this tiebreaker to 15 going to be your men's singles gold medalist here at the app pickleball superstore.com philadelphia open good Foster having to run around that one because like you guys have mentioned before that backhand something that yates wanted to target well if yates is going to go to the backhand side of foster he's really got to go to the line because then that forces foster to have to run around it completely like he did right there Yates doing a good job to send the ball back cross court where even Foster's spry and athletic 22-year-old self. Spry. Get it. Look at that one. Haven't heard that for a while. It's an SAT word. <laughs> good Scrabble word, spry. Oh, Ooh. shapes oh. that one in. So big thing that Johnson has done here is he has calmed himself down. He's found a way to slow himself down with his movement is very precise he's not over moving he's taking his time to execute the shots and he started executing them well when he's rushing and he's moving through the ball when he's trying to hit it that's where he's been missing those balls either into the net or pulling them wide in the last three four points he's really committed to just playing the ball and not trying not trying to get to the next shot too quickly we talk about that chad all the time is when you're playing well how does the game seem to you it seems slow right and so again right now it's exactly what's happened with yates is that he's slowed himself down and now the game has become slow and when the game becomes slow to you then it becomes easier when you're rushing and trying to force everything that's when things go out of whack hunter johnson talking to his twin brother yates about some strategy here and that's one of the things that it's great for Yates to have Hunter in his corner right now because so often when we see Yates in a men's singles gold medal match, he's been playing against Hunter several times so far this season. But here's an opportunity for Yates to sort of get that feedback from his brother, which we see them get a lot in men's doubles. We see them work off well, of each other. You know, it, it's kind of it's catch-22 with men's <laughs> doubles. They're either working together or they're, or they're, they're going exactly. off at each other. So. Exactly. In this situation, it's all help. It's, it's all help. It's all help. <laughs> because Hunter Johnson removed <laughs> from the medal contention, and Yates now with an opportunity to tie things up. But even right there, like that is that is calm, composed, doesn't try to do too much, gets a ball to shape and drop down. There's not a rush in that. So there's a pattern right now with E.H. Johnson. 
If he's getting a ball to his backhand side, he's going cross-court drop to the backhand side of Jack Foster. If Foster's taking it out of the air, he's trying to punch it flat down the line, but he's missed it twice. Misses that serve, does Jack Foster, and Yates with that last point, his sixth here in the, 15, in the championship tiebreaker game to 15. That matches his total from the last two games to 11 combined. So Johnson finding much more rhythm here. Oh, he was and there, but he tried said. to rush it. He tried mm -hmm. to move back middle. He had Foster hung out to dry there. And again, there's the it's the pattern right now we're seeing, and it's working so far. But like you said, Chad, he rushed it a little bit. Yeah, is. is that the first backhand we've seen Jack hit from Second. the baseline? Second. <laughs> and you hear Yates say, yep, there it is. It's just so hard to get it to his backhand mm -hmm. because he's so quick, he'll run around it. Oh, Ooh, just wow. wide. Just wide. <laughs> Foster talking to his, to his sideline support here. Telling them to get positive with him. He needs them to try to pick him up right now. Because Yates Johnson with first lead for him of this championship tiebreaker game to 15 since he got the first point here. Nice job by Yates Johnson. Closing ground and punching that backhand through. We're going to have a shoe change here after. Let's take another look at Yates Johnson. Getting that last point to make it 8-6 here in our championship tiebreaker game to 15. Jack Foster, though, needing to change his sh shoes. He uh, took He's his shoes. He some holes in them. He blew, yep, he, exactly. He blew a tire. <laughs> Honestly, for how much we've seen him skidding and sliding around here on championship court, I'm not surprised that that happened. It looked like you went to the official and said, um, please, I need to go change my shoes. And so he's coming back now to championship court with a new pair of shoes. See that a lot in pickleball just because of how much movement there is on the court. We'll talk about movement, then talk about heat, right? Right. As how, however hot as the temperature says it is, it's at least 5 to 10 degrees warmer on the court. The court is baking right now, as you see Jack Foster just eh, straight in the garbage. I don't need these anymore. Go get me a new pair. But again, and when these players, you see them, especially in singles here, sliding around, going through and tearing through these soles, Jack needing a second pair of shoes for this game to 15. Well, you can't have faulty equipment here. That would be unacceptable because Jack Foster in a fight here on championship court. This 15, this championship tiebreaker game 215. He built up a 6-1 lead, but now it has been a seven point run by Yates Johnson. Jack Foster showing the official his it's not, it's left not, it's, foot. Yeah, it's not the sole. He's, he's put holes right on the knuckle of the large toe. And he's worn a hole in the shoe and is actually bleeding out of his sock right now. Yesterday, uh, Thursday, or yesterday when he was playing uh, mixed doubles, he had his shoes off and he's got his feet taped up because he's taken so much skin off of his toes by sliding around on the court. The other person that we see that a lot from is William Sobeck. William Sobeck yeah. slides around quite a bit as well. And we see him needing to change his shoes. So the shoes have been changed. We are ready for play to resume here on championship court. Championship tiebreaker game to 15. Yates Johnson is on a 7-0 run right now. Foster had built up a 6-1 lead to start this game. But now it is Yates Johnson with the lead and the ball. Chance to extend it here. Oh, my. 
my goodness. Foster almost getting there for the around the post, but that angle by Yates just too strong. And Foster was there. He just can't get it up and over. Made good contact with it. But Yates continues to roll here. Takes a 9-6 lead. Friendly roll there for Foster, and that Ooh. time the around the post works for Jack Foster. That was clean right there from Jack Foster around the post as you see it right back at you with that great camera view down the line. It's a side out here, so Jack Foster with the ball. And Yates sending that backhand just straight back into the net. So that's going to halt an 8-0 run that Yates had put together here in this championship tiebreaker game to 15. Makes it 7-9 for Foster's serve. A strong overhead there from Johnson putting the pressure on Foster. That one pushing just back on that previous volley. Johnson telling himself that the wind is blowing behind him. That ball's going to die. Don't lunge out for that volley. Just let it come to the paddle. There's that big serve again from Yates Johnson as these boys have continued to throw punches with their serves. This three-point lead, the largest for Yates Johnson since it was the exact same score in game one, and now the largest lead for Yates Johnson at any point in this men's singles gold medal match. That serve was almost like an off-pace serve yep. right there. It threw Jack Foster off a little bit. That's like seeing dead red fastball all day long, and then all of a sudden <laughs> pull the string on a changeup right there, and you're out in front of it, and you miss hit it. Corkscrew yourself into the ground. Yep. So it's an 11 to seven lead for Yates Johnson here in our championship tiebreaker game to 15. Yates trying to win his third men's singles gold medal here on the 2023 APP Tour. Jack Foster playing in his first championship Sunday in men's singles, looking for that first men's singles gold medal. He already beat Yates in the best two out of three games to 11, which is how we got to this championship tiebreaker game to 15. And a very good crowd here on Championship Court in Berwyn, Pennsylvania. Just about 40 minutes outside of Philadelphia. Enjoying some great pickleball. Women's singles. Fun match this morning to get us started. Salome Davidze, women's singles gold medalist. Who will join her from the men's side? Yates Johnson with a chance to extend his four-point lead right here. We'll see where he goes with this serve as far as off pace or power. It's still the same thing. Yeah. But again, Yates is on this run, and it's because he has slowed himself down and is executing the shots. Jack Foster, Foster sending that long. Yeah, Foster now has become what Johnson was. He's trying to rush and get up there to the kitchen line, put the pressure on. He's trying to move and really try to get that ball or that stroke finished before Johnson has a chance to react. Gets the better of Yates Johnson trying to crash the kitchen line there. And how many times have we seen it a, a, a player dominate the two out of three and then take a 10-minute break and you see it completely flip, right? Because, again, it's a reset well, as soon as the two out of three is over. Foster was dominating this one up 7-1 until Johnson slowed himself down. Some of these balls that Jack Foster is able to get to is just so impressive. But then Yates finishes with a strong overhead. Even on that overhead, he does punish that ball, but it's just calm. It's very calm, not rushed. Yeah. 
Yates Johnson now with a well-placed ball into the corner, and he is one point away from winning the men's singles gold medal here in Philadelphia. Oh, he gets some help from the net oh, wow. going. And that is how he does it. Yates Johnson is your men's singles gold medalist at the APPPickleballSuperstore.com Philadelphia Open. A hard-fought gold medal for Yates Johnson taking down Jack Foster. We will hear from them both when we come back. Sixteen years from today, Greg Gerstner will finally land the perfect cannonball. Unsuspecting friends? Check. Epic water displacement? Big check. A work of art that's only possible because Greg is already meeting all these same people at AARP volunteer and community events. They'll keep Greg active, involved, and mischievous, and help make sure his happiness lives as long as he does. That's why the younger you are, the more you need AARP. Presented by LS, Gamma, The Boca Raton, and Franklin. And here is the Boca Raton Championship point, and it is a let cord winner for Yates Johnson over Jack Foster, Chet. Yeah, Foster pushing Johnson to the limit, but Johnson... Pulling this one out, slowing himself down, and a fantastic effort. We've got A.J. McCord, who's down courtside with both our players. That's right. We're down here on championship court for your gold medal match interview, powered by Franklin. A championship tiebreaker game that we needed here in the men's singles gold medal match. Let's give it up for both Yates Johnson and Jack Foster. A great crowd here. We're going to get to our gold medalist in just a minute. But first, Jack, what a hard-fought match. You push Yates to the absolute limit. I know it was a brutal time even just getting here. You battled through the back draw to punch your ticket to Sunday. Where did you find that resilience from? Yeah, uh, just keep fighting the whole time. Um, first of all, thank you to Ken and everybody from the APP as well as all the referees. And uh, Congrats to Yates on a great week. You know, um, he's a fantastic player, but an even better person. And uh, it's an honor just to come out and play against him. Well, we had so much fun watching you compete. Give it up for Jack Foster, your silver medalist, here at the 2023 PickleballSuperscore.com Philadelphia Open. And now let's get to you. Yates Johnson, I know that this is a men's singles gold medal that means a lot to you. You're third here on the APP Tour this season. This guy wins the last two games in the best to 11. What did you have to tell yourself before that championship tiebreaker game? Yeah, I mean, there's not really much I could do. I kind of got a little lucky in the first, you know, let court to win the game. Um, Jack just played really well the, the whole two and, you know, the second and third games. Um, they're really clean, big serves, didn't really give me much, didn't make any unforced errors. So I was getting a little down on myself, but he played too good. Um, but, yeah, I just kind of reset for that game to 15 and, 
um, kind of got my head right and, and kind of changed the game plan a little bit, got, you know, got a little more consistent, a little more bigger serves. Um, but yeah, I mean, congrats on Jack. He had an awesome week. Um, he's a good friend on the APP tour. Awesome guy, better player. Uh, maybe, maybe the same, maybe the same. Um, but yeah, it's, it's awesome to be able to play him in the final. Um, it's, it's always hard to play your friends, you know, but um, congrats to him for making the final. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the match. You mentioned getting down on yourself a little bit. You're somebody who wears your heart on your sleeve when you're playing pickleball. What do you have to tell yourself in that moment to reset, play a little looser, and get back to your game? Yeah, I mean, you know, pickleball can be frustrating sometimes. Uh, you're playing with a plastic ball out here with no strings. It's a paddle. Um, so, you know, there's not much you can do sometimes. Sometimes the element elements play a big part. Um, but, yeah, you just kind of have to, like, I think the biggest thing is having fun. You, ha you can't take, get too hard on yourself, get, take it too seriously. I think when I'm having fun and kind of being loose, um, that's kind of when I play my best. So. What did Hunter tell you? Uh, he was giving me some good points. He's just kind of, you know, kind of getting me right in the head, I guess. I was getting a little flustered. He was calming me down, um, giving me some pointers, and, and that really helped. Um, and it's awesome to have him on the sideline cheering me on. Congratulations, Yates Thank Johnson, you. your gold medalist here at the 2023 APP Pickleball Superstore.com Philadelphia Open. Give it up for both of our medalists here in Philadelphia. We'll be right back on ESPN Plus.